It's that time of year again, US Thanksgiving. And while our Canadian friends to the north have had Thanksgiving and cleaned up the messes already, we're right in the heart of it here in the USA. And so, well, it's become a bit of a tradition here at the channel to celebrate things that we are thankful for in the EV industry from the past 12 months. As is usually the case, I'm asking everybody on the team to share their good bits. So while that sounded wrong, I think you know what I meant. For me personally, it's been kind of hard to find things to be thankful for this year. Uh, a lot of the EVs uh, in the sector right now are incredibly unaffordable. Um, and my personal uh, luck with EVs has been kind of touchy. Um, but I am actually really quite thankful, um, having been made aware of how many people behind the scenes are actually trying to get equitable forms of, of EVs to market and how much charging has come along. Um, I think for me personally, um, it's been the e-bikes. Uh, I'm still using one of our press bikes just to get out on the weekends whenever I have a moment. And it's really improved my mental health uh, considerably. And I'm really excited actually to see what other forms of, of small mobility will, uh, will come in the future. I think that's gonna be a, a really big uh, uh, thing that more people are gonna be using. This is traditional this time of year. We are all saying what we are thankful for. And for me, there were a couple of things. First is the affordable Citroen that came out, the Citroen EC3, which I am really excited to see a non-Chinese automaker actually putting some effort in and bringing out a vehicle that uses some cost-saving features to make sure that it's a more affordable vehicle. If I was in Europe, it would definitely be on my shortlist. And I hope that Stellantis actually bring some of that technology to cars in the US. I think that would be really, really good and it would be the start of getting us some more affordable vehicles over here. I'm not gonna lie, this year has been particularly challenging in the EV sector, but there are some things that I am really thankful about. The first one is all of the investment that we're starting to see being plowed into EV infrastructure, whether it is because of the next transition or whether it's because of US federal funding, we're really starting to see money come into charging and people starting to think about what charging needs to be and how it should work for everyone. I'm also really grateful that we've moved away from the early adopter phase and we're starting to see people enter into EV ownership who aren't early adopters, people who just want to drive an EV because it happens to be the next vehicle on their list. They've realized that they cost less to operate from a general day-to-day -day perspective. And while there are some caveats to EV ownership, are enjoying the fact that they don't have to go to their gas station again. If you are someone who has recently acquired an EV and you're among that list of not early adopters, I'm really grateful for you jumping on board. I am thankful for an increased focus on sustainability and longevity. And what I mean by that is I've seen a real focus on being environmentally friendly, focusing on where your food's coming from, focusing on where your clothes are coming from. I've seen a lot of new products and services that are really focusing on being environmentally friendly. And I think we'll have a lot of positive impact from those. It seems that being environmentally friendly is cool again. And I think from that societally, if we keep up this momentum, we'll see a lot of positive impact, hopefully higher levels like government, things like that, showing like the people are interested in being greener with how they live. Having an access to an e-bike and an e-mountain bike specifically is actually really opened my eyes to things that I had never quite thought of before. Uh, the bike that we had on review has allowed me to get to places that I don't normally am able to get to with a regular bike. Um, and I've started to really see things like how useful they are for uh, building trails. I saw some people out building mountain bike trails using e-bikes because they were able to haul more gear. Um, e-bikes have also <laughs> shown me how much uh, clear cut and how many trees are being cut down in forested areas that otherwise you wouldn't have seen. Uh, it's kind of an eye opener as to all the different things that are happening in the environment that you don't always get to see. 
I'm also super thankful to people like Dala from Dala's EV Repair and the open source community. I know I say this every year, but it never ceases to amaze me how inventive and generous a lot of the open source community are with their time and energy. And it makes it possible for people who have older EVs to keep them on the road long after their respective automakers have kicked them to the curb. And in the case of the EV battery replacement for the Nissan Leaf means that you can actually upgrade your older Nissan Leaf to more capable, longer range battery packs. Dala's also been doing some great work in the industry to help make it possible for you to use old EV battery packs to provide power to your home in an emergency. And well, as many of you know, I have an OEM backup solution that's been far from reliable this year. So seeing all of these third party open source recycled projects coming online to make it easier and more equitable to have backup power solutions for your home. I am really, really there for that. The other thing that I am grateful for this year is the impact of the Build Back Better infrastructure bills. Um, I mean, I know that it didn't end up being that, but exactly those infrastructure bills and the Inflation Reduction Act have actually meant that in the US we are seeing some real significant moves towards infrastructure to support our transition to clean energy. And just seeing that begin gives me the tiniest inkling of hope that as humans we might get to survive on this rock in something approaching a lifestyle that I would find comfortable. Um, so I'm excited about that. Have a happy and warm and safe holidays. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got any thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1,500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, helping us cover our bills, pay our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed below, just follow the links. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just about $10.08 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Conrad Young, Neon Frog, Siobhan Greeny, Alan Savage, Scotty, Ray Mario, Jennifer, Nesklova, and the Lord of Chaos. Thanks for becoming part of the TE crew. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have an old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is also linked below. And if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store also in the down below. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you again soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, The Mighty Algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we here also think that this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving.